Alright guys, such quite a bit again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to Valorant News. Plenty of updates for you guys today, not least among which Shazam stating that going into Ascension for 2023, he is 100% confident that G2 are going to win the entire thing with seemingly not too many issues. Very much enjoy your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always, I would greatly appreciate it. First of all, here we go. Teaser number three for what we believe is the new map. It could be something else though. So um, if we zoom in here, we find the following. We've got, of course, some of the characters having some, well, basically this is in Korea, right? We've got the street food type thing. This is Korean language because you've got the circles and stuff. I think I'm um, playing GeoGuessr has taught me that a fair bit. So this is Korea. Now, Split, it kind of looks like nighttime Split, right? But um, Split, I'm pretty sure is based in Japan. So this is Korea. I'm pretty sure this is Korea. If you go, if I'm wrong, correct me, but I think this is correct. So either this new map, if this is the new map, is some sort of like night Split version that's in Korea, or it looks entirely different, or this isn't even a map and it's a teaser for something else. I don't know, but um, this is what we have for now. There's probably going to be one more that happens today, and then maybe one more tomorrow, and then the map arrives. This weekend, we are going to have some gameplay, we believe, so that's all we effectively have for now on that front, but I'll keep you guys updated if you're interested, of course. Quickly on Roster Mania, first of all, this Apex Valorant, not A-P-E-X or anything like that, but A-P-E-K-S, is going to feature Enzo, Magnum, and Mystic, all former Fnatic players, so pretty interesting stuff. They're going to try and compete in the Polaris League and Challengers and get through to Ascension and win it, all that type of stuff. We'll talk more on Ascension here in a second. Some teams actually are still having Game Changers rosters. Many have dropped them, but um, turns out that NIP have confirmed that they are indeed signing a Game Changers roster once again going into 2023, so kind of cool to see. Some orgs are still interested. And also this, FPX and Tai Lu are looking to sign at Chinese teams based on the fact that it's now been approved by their regulator and um, it's all good to go. So Tyler, you guys, I'm sure, will know if you follow Counter-Strike at all. Pretty a legendary name in the Counter-Strike side. For Chinese FPSs and FPX also now looking to fill the roster as well, in addition to Edward Gaming. And we believe that two Chinese teams will maybe get invites to the Sao Paulo LAN, in them, and it was going to be a 32-team LAN that rather than just 30, as was initially going to be the case. Now, big update as well here from James Dash. This guy was um, the host for the LCS for quite some time. Confirms last night that he will not be returning to the broadcast going into this upcoming year. Now, it's kind of interesting the fact that Riot are not exactly divesting away from the LCS, but um, just, you know, the Riot Games studio they use for the LCS is now going to be used as well for Valorant, and um, the dates are changing. I think LCS is now midweek, whereas Valorant is on the weekends, so yeah, they're pushing hard, Valorant pretty hard, I think, understandably. And also, he confirms here that basically they're taking a new direction where they don't need a consistent host, and therefore he's been dropped, really, by Riot. They will still have some discussions. I don't really watch the LCS not so familiar with Dash and um, you know how well liked he is in the community and stuff but nonetheless obviously a key part of I mean he's been there for basically 10 years and um, and well he's going to get dropped basically by right. This is the type of thing that they do as um, Ethan is discussed here by Dot Esports apparently they didn't even try to negotiate with him they just straight up cut his role and he was on stream last night discussing it and he was asked right by many even Valorant players like look hey come to Valorant. Now in fairness also a Riot thing they could certainly bring him over to the Valorant side and um, you know maybe they want that to be the case maybe they don't. But an update for you guys nonetheless on the talent side that we might have in Valorant going forward, but also just goes to show that Riot is certainly not exactly going all in on Valorant, but um, you know, they're definitely prioritizing Valorant, I feel like right now, over League of Legends in the way they're setting up their regular leagues compared to what they were doing last season, let's say, with the move into partnership. Quick note as well on Sentinels and also NRG, with finally everything looking ready to go. We've known that teams like 100 Thieves, teams like um, Cloud9, they've been practicing for quite some time. They've got a significant head start I would say, on the other top American teams we expect to be competitive this season. So Sentinels are finally good to go. Pancada, of course, a few days ago, travelled up to the US, got his visa sorted. Sassy got his visa sorted. We've seen the last few days that Zekin and Pancada have both been absolutely tearing it up in the ranked play ladders, and I imagine that means that the scrims are starting very shortly indeed. The team is going to get ready to go and um, has a good, I would say, five weeks of practice, because I think it's February the 14th, maybe, that the Sao Paulo kickoff begins. So they've got, um, you know, a bit of time and then they've got to fly out there and prepare and everything. So probably a month and a little bit of practice these teams have to catch up to the rest of the world, but also catch up to where 100 Thieves are. Now, like NRG FNS the other day said that it's going to take them about a week to catch up to where 100 Thieves are in terms of how far ahead they are of practice right now. But still, at least they've got a good month of solid practice to get used to the new meta and also to the new maps as well that uh, will probably be in effect maybe by the Sao Paulo kickoff. So it might not be too long for the players to get their head around the new
new map that might be in the map pool because of course Split is returning we believe in addition to the new map with Bind and Breeze going the other way. And Ardis also confirms that he's finally out there as well. One game of NA ranked and I've had a better experience of the whole of last year in EU ranked. Kind of interesting because I think um, both regions tend to believe that the other regions ranked play is way better than theirs. I think um, NA players generally think that EU ranked is way better. I know that we've heard stories from Ye and others when they've travelled over to Europe for a boot camp and they've played ranked and they feel like players are taking it much more serious than in NA and to Ardis seems like it's the other way around even though maybe he's joking right who knows even um, you know, Eccles replies to this and Mystic replies I'm sure joking around you're the reason EU ranked sucked now that you're gone it's the best thing I've ever played plus why don't nobody is toxic anymore but kind of confirming here that indeed Ardis is out of Europe he's there in North America and he's ready to go so it seems like pretty much at the same time Sentinels are good to go for the new year so are NRG and Ardis they can get their practice in whether they'll be quite up to speed with 100 Thieves who are probably the team to beat certainly the team to beat I would say North America as it stands by the time Sao Paulo comes around they should have enough lead time to make that work and that some kind of confirming that indeed that was the case last night as well let's talk G2 then and Shazam because it's kind of funny the fact that Shazam yesterday was defending his teammate Oxy for throwing at the rumor and the implication had it the accusation was in the ranked play side now last night he's also talking about others kind of frustrating him in ranked play so kind of funny really that he was defending his teammate for arguably doing a similar thing and um well he links this particular match here where these guys are seemingly throwing alternate games as um yeah this guy hello kitty 5 and 18 on his team not so happy about that so he reckons that if he's looked through the numbers then um they're kind of doing this to abuse the rankings and everything so not exactly a massive surprise ranked is obviously not great but um you know i think understandably to try and call these guys out the other part of it though is what he feels like is possible for g2 going forward he was asked the question about tier 2 about ascension about challenges and i'll say okay what do you think is possible are you going to win it how easy is it going to be and he reckons 100% he's a little bit tongue in cheek here right so he, I'm sure he realizes that it's not going to be a walk in the park but he reckons that it's not going to be too difficult it seems to win the entire thing and get through to ascension what's up mate my holiday was really nice but it is good to be back i think it's down. been a long time since i streamed Triple, baby. i'm excited I don't think they've announced anything about Ascension, like the invited teams or the format or anything. So, kind of just have to wait on the. Imagine we forgot to sign up for Ascension, just like sitting around practicing. Like we've just been grinding <laughs> hours and hours a day and all day, and then we don't even get to play a match. Like, uh, no one signed us up. Gonna dominate 2023. Yeah, we're winning Ascension for sure. Also kind of confirming there, Shazam, that indeed G2 will be automatically invited because obviously G2 haven't signed up for the qualifiers that begin on the 9th of January, very shortly indeed, next Monday, right? And um, they've not signed up for that. But also he says, oh yeah, it would be a real shame if we couldn't play or whatever. And the, oh, okay, I guess the invites haven't been confirmed yet. So six teams are invited. Six teams are brought in through the qualifiers that, as I say, begin on January the 9th. There's four that qualify the first weekends, then and a further two that qualify the next weekends. But basically confirming G2 have been invited. So so out of the 12 teams there in challenges, G2 only have to be one of the best eight, should be achievable. Then they've got to go to the playoffs at the end of the year, get top two out of those eight in the North American side. Then they can qualify for Ascension. And if they win that out of the eight teams there, then you win. So it's far from easy, right? Yes, they will easily be, I would say, a top eight team in North American Ascension. Once they've done that, though, they've got to be a top two team in North American Ascension. That's a more challenging thing. When you've got M80, the Guard, FaZe, TSM, and others also competing for the same level, and and, um, okay, they've got to be one of the best there. They've got to do well enough for the playoffs. But uh, they've got quite a long time to get to that point. They don't have to be great at the start of the season. They just have to be great at the end. And then even if they do get top two in North America, which is not going to be so easy to accomplish, should be certainly achievable for G2. They've got a great team. Then they've got to be the best out of eight teams from the entire Americas. So, you know, it's certainly not easy to get through to Ascension. I know that some organizations probably think, okay, yes, we'll sign former pro players. And therefore, we're going to be good to go. No problem at all. And we're going to qualify. It's going to be more difficult I think than people believe I'm sure Shazam realizes that but nonetheless at least he's confident in his new roster that they can succeed in that way also as we close out the video here from Ye because uh, we saw a couple of days ago that Ye was talking about the game crashing for everyone and this had um you know 14 or so thousand likes and Valorant actually quote tweet this and say this should be resolved in a happy new year and therefore Ye's like okay I'm gonna second here if I've got all this power then maybe let's try and flex my muscles a little bit further he says hear me out though buff harbors walls buff harbors smoke modify 
it. So once the shield is broken, the smoke doesn't fade, which I kind of agree with as well. Like, um, I think it's a bit annoying that Harbour Smoke, when you shoot the shield, which isn't really hard to break, it just disappears. Like, um, the smoke should definitely stay up, I think, past that. Buff Neon, decrease the energy drain and re the wall damage for enemies only. I do agree that the recent Neon nerf was probably unnecessary and that even Buff Phoenix. So, yeah, we'll see if any of these go through for Gay. But um, he reckons that Phoenix should be better than Molly damage, the Neon should go back to kind of how she was, and then Harbour should get better as well. And um, even, uh, you know, Tech says anything else, maybe some tea, maybe a universal chamber trip since they absolutely murdered the man. So it's kind of funny actually that Ye wants Chamber to be back in business to a certain extent and reckons that the trip should maybe be changed so he's actually more viable and uh, even goes on to say maybe reworking Icebox A as it forces a really particular way of playing it. Some more cover and ability to play together would be nice for defenders. So Ye's given all the ideas to Riot. We'll see if they act on this at all over the coming days. And just a mention as well here from Tens, he also gives his perspective stating when are they going to fix the Marshall scope reloads? Feels so hard to control the gun because you have to auto rescope because if you have auto rescope enabled it tries to zoom in and cancel the reloads so he's got his ideas of the solutions and if they listen to yay on the other points maybe they will listen to tens on this one but very much enjoyed to your thoughts in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and i'll see you next time